Remember being at Bruce's house with he and Linda when Brandon was little and to see him pick up his son and give his son a kiss and show the tenderness and put his son to bed, leave all of his guests and everyone. His son was more important. He didn't say, Linda, do this. He did it. The funny thing is he never wanted his son, Brandon, for example, to ever even consider being an actor. He said, someday you're going to grow up to be the biggest producer in Hollywood, and you're going to call the shots, and you'll tell everybody who can be a star and who can, can't be a star. No one's going to tell you that because you're Chinese that you can't be a leading man. So he, that's the goal that he had for his, his son. In 1971, Chuck Norris put on the World Pro-Am Karate Championships in Los Angeles at the sports arena. Bruce Lee came as a favor to Chuck as his guest of honor and special guest. And Chuck had asked Bruce if he would award the Grand Championship trophy to the black belt who won the ultimate title. And Bruce, of course, said he would be very happy to. The day started with the little kids fighting, little juniors. When those kids won, and uh, I don't know, the tournament queen or someone was going to give them their trophies, Bruce got up and went there all on his own and took the trophies and himself handed it to these kids that he would be that sensitive. And of course the kids are looking up at Bruce Lee with their mouths agape, you know, looking at this man. And, um, but he would do that. And to show that sensitivity and that tenderness, that stays with me. When I look at a Bruce Lee film, I see Bruce, I know he's acting, but I never see that tender moment and uh, I know that was part of him. Lee, I want you to teach me what you did the other night. I already told Miss Bell I can't. I'm willing to empty my cup in order to taste your tea. Your open-mindedness is cool, but it doesn't change anything. I don't believe in system, Mr. Longstreet, nor in method. Now, without system, without method, what's to teach? But you had to learn. You weren't born knowing how to take apart three men in a matter of seconds. True. But I found a cause of my ignorance. Well, help me find mine. Kick me in the stomach as hard as you can. Oh, well, wait a minute. I don't want to hurt you. I'm holding an air shield. Come on. Okay. I remember doing a film in which I now hired an old-time stuntman, a uh, very now old man, he was in his up. 70s, who was a stuntman back in the Max Senate days of the old chase scenes, and he was a great driver, it. stunt driver. He said, three, I was here. Bruce Lee's Strong. stunt double. And now here's this little old man okay. in his 70s. I said, Harvey, Can you, stand you know, you're almost 80 years old. What could you do for Bruce Lee? It's me, baby. And he says, I was his stunt driver when that... TV Ready? thing he Ready? did about Cato, what? and he said, you know, the sucker couldn't drive a lick. Please. Bruce had a passion to own a Porsche. There was one day in the Sherman Oaks Karate School, which Chuck Norris owned in partnership with Bob Wall, of which I was the chief instructor. And we were in the office, the three of us, Bob Wall, Chuck Norris, and myself. When we heard this god-awful noise out front, the screeching of tires, we heard a car bang against the curb. We thought, oh my God, you know, the world is coming to an end. We rushed outside, and there is this brand new Porsche sort of sitting at a cockeyed angle on the curve. It wasn't very well parked. And Bruce Lee is standing next to it with his arms folding it and just looking it over and just as proud as he could be. He said, guys, look at my new car. We said, Bruce, it's beautiful. But we thought, you know, something happened. No, nah, no, nah, everything's fine. He says, Chuck, come on for a ride. I'm going to take you for a ride my new car. Well, Chuck froze in terror. He said, uh, Bruce, I've got to run back to my other school. I've got lessons to teach. Uh, I'll see you later. But remember, you owe me a ride. 
Oh, sure, sure. Pat, come on, jump in the car. I said, well, Bruce, you know, my, my, my classes are about to start. I've got to go inside. Uh, another time, okay? Oh, sure, sure. Bob, come on, come on. I'll, I'll show you, take you ride in my car. It's great, you know, hot. And Bob says, uh, uh, Bruce, I have an appointment. I have a deal coming in. I'm going to sell somebody a lesson. Bruce never got it. I, we said, you know, why don't you just jump in and go for a ride, you know, and we'll catch you another time. Okay, guys. He never got the fact that we were, no way did we want to get into the car with Bruce. And, of course, he just drove off in his new car, was going to show somebody else. But there's a prequel to that story. Uh, Steve McQueen, who was my best friend up to the time he, that he died, he was a student of Bruce Lee for many years, and after Bruce became a very famous film star, of course, he no longer taught lessons, so Steve began to train with Chuck Norris and eventually with myself. And after Bruce had passed, Steve told me the story that one day after Bruce had come back from doing a film in Hong Kong, he had called Steve. He said, Steve, I've got to get a Porsche. I want to get a Porsche like yours. Now, Steve, you have to realize, was a world-class driver. He could have made a living as a Grand Prix driver. He was that good. Anyway, Steve said to, to Bruce, look, Bruce, let me take you for a ride in my Porsche. It's really a hot car, but if you don't know what you're doing, you can get into a lot of trouble with this thing. So uh, Bruce was all excited. He said, okay. So Steve went and pulled up and picked up Bruce, and they went to Mulholland Drive around the San Fernando Valley in L.A. Now, Mulholland Drive is a very narrow, very high road, on the top of the mountains that surround the San Fernando Valley. Very twisty, and if you miss a turn, you're gonna go off into the valley. So Bruce and, and Steve went up to the San Fernando Valley, up to the Mulholland uh, Drive to go for the ride. Now, Bruce was sitting next to Steve, and if you've never been in a Porsche, they have a very deep wheel well, or, or foot well, where your feet goes in a very low seat, so you can stretch your legs straight out. And Steve was really focused on the road. And, and uh, he said, okay, Bruce, you ready? And he heard Bruce say, yes, I'm all set, let's go. Well, Steve took that sucker, that Porsche, through its paces. And he was just driving it like crazy. And he'd say, what do you think of this power, Bruce? And Bruce said nothing. He heard no noise over there. And Steve says, now watch this. And he t goes through the twisting turns and twisting around. And... and isn't that great, Bruce? See how it handles? Now watch this when I slide it. And Steve would put the thing into a, a tail slide, going right near the edge of the... And, the, and isn't that great, Bruce? No sound. He twists the other way, no sound. He says, now watch this, Bruce. This sucker will do a mean 180. And Steve goes, and gears down, and spins it around, does a total 180. Stops the car, and he says, he looks over, and he says, well, what do you think, Bruce? And Bruce isn't there. Bruce! And he looks down. Bruce is down in the footwell, covered up, and he gets up. I can't use the language that Bruce used, but he said, McQueen, I'll kill you. I'll kill you, McQueen. I'm going to kill you. And Steve, Steve said his eyes open. He said, uh-oh, here is Bruce Lee, angry, the toughest guy in the world. He's angry, and he wants to kill me. So Steve said he took off and started going as fast as he could in the highway. He said, Bruce, calm down. And Bruce...